Sometimes when shooting and working with film, not everything is under your control. And even if it is under your control, it's a very hands-on and physical process that has a lot of aspects that can often go wrong. Sadly, that's somewhat the case for this video. We're gonna be taking a look at some portraits that I took on 35 millimeter motion picture film, but some of them didn't come out quite how I intended. Let's take a look. The film that I used for today's video was Kodak Vision 3 250D, which is a motion picture daylight balanced negative film stock. You can purchase this film stock from a number of places these days, but I purchased it from a lovely photographer named Tim, who respools and actually sells the film himself. I'll leave a link to his shop and his Instagram in the description down below. Now these photos I actually took a very long time ago whilst shooting some other portraits for the channel, but I was a little hesitant, I guess, at first to share these images because of the final result being something that I wasn't completely pleased with. But when I started this channel in my very first couple of videos, I told myself that it would be an honest journal and a diary through my journey of learning film photography, through the ups, through the downs, through the highs, whether a shoot went well, whether it didn't go well, and really just documenting the quirks of this. So today I'm simply sharing one of these quirks. I shot two rolls of this 35 millimeter film, so I had just over 70 pictures which I created. But unfortunately the lab that I sent these to get these developed at wasn't my usual lab as that doesn't process E6 film. And this new lab which I used I think spilled some chemicals or something went wrong on one of the rolls during the developing process because the majority of the images that I got back had some very interesting green streaks all over them. The lab was of course incredibly apologetic and sent me a brand new roll to replace the one that become ruined. And it was obviously just a complete accident, a one-off coincidence that I doubt has ever happened to them again. But I'm just glad that the images weren't really of any significance and it was just a little test shoot to see what the characteristics of this respooled 35 millimeter motion picture film was. But the first roll, thankfully, was actually absolutely fine. They all came out fine. And so I'll share all of those images with you quickly now, just before I share with you my thoughts on using 35 millimeter motion picture film for portrait work. Oh, and just so you're aware, all of these images were taken on my Canon EOS 3, a camera that I really need to shoot more with because I just love the images that it comes out with every single time. And I used a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens, rating the film at an ISO of 250. I think really struck me about the film stock and the images that I got back were just how contrasty they were. Now, of course, this could also be down to the scanning process of the lab. My normal lab tends to provide me with a much flatter scan that gives me a lot of latitude in post. I didn't give this new lab that I, as I said, I hadn't used before. I didn't give them any instructions as to how I wanted it, but there's definitely also a chance that the film stock that I use has an inherently more contrasty look than the negatives that I'm used to. The unedited scans, which I'll share a couple of now on screen, definitely had some quite bright highlights on Carmela's skin and also had some really deep dark shadows on the other sides of her face. Personally, I don't hate the look. It's something I'm not really used to. I'm used to those soft tones in my portraits and in the film stocks that I would normally shoot, but there was definitely still plenty of latitude in the scans and I was able to get a final exposure that I wanted to the majority of the time. And generally I was pretty happy with the results. I should also mention that I was using my spot meter with a flash for all of these interior portraits, just like I was for the other videos from this same shoot. So the second roll of film, these were all from images taken outside to see how the film stock handled regular exterior light. The sun was setting, there were thereabouts, golden hour type time, so it wasn't completely bright sunshine with really harsh light, 
but there was plenty of light to be able to handheld the EOS 3, particularly with a wide open aperture. So I'll share with you now the second roll of film, all of the images, which of course, a lot of them have green streaks all over them. Just bear that in mind. Now, funnily enough, these exterior shots do tend to have actually a slight green tint to them. Now, I'm not sure, and I can't be completely sure if that's down to the green streaks and the chemicals that were spilt all over it, or if the Kodak 250D does actually have a slight green tinge, but it's definitely something that I noticed, particularly with these exterior shots. Again, the photos out here were very contrasty and the raw scans had some very deep blacks present even before I began editing them. And this set was also a little bit more saturated than what I'm used to with some more typically muted film stocks such as Portra or even in comparison to this, Kodak Gold. Once again, I don't hate the results, something that I would use, but wouldn't be the first thing that I pull out of the bag when I'm shooting portraits. Some of these photos I actually was still really happy with. They did still give me some good results. And I think it was still a pretty useful experiment and a good learning experience in regards to understanding some of the innate traits of this respooled Kodak 35 millimeter motion picture film. Would I pick it over portrait or Kodak Gold for portraits? Probably not, but I do want to try out for some different things. I still have four or five rolls of this film to shoot. So if you do want to see me perhaps take these out to, to, and shoot some different subjects, maybe landscapes, something along those lines, let me know down in the comments what you think I should shoot. That's going to be all for this one. A slightly, I guess, disappointing result in the end with this shoot, but plenty of positives to take away and plenty to still learn from and keep developing in my work. If you enjoyed, please do feel free to leave a like. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And and of course, maybe consider subscribing if you want to see any more of my content. Stay safe, everybody. Stay happy. And I'll see you in the next one.